everyone, what's going on? This is David from Beauty and the Nerd, and today I'm going to do a revisit to one of my most popular videos concerning a free voice mixing software called Voice Meter Banana. Uh, I've had about a year at this point to use it and tweak it and really learn what this program can do. So hopefully this update will help a lot of you who have been having problems fix and make your audio better. All right, everyone, so the first thing that you're gonna wanna do when you first download the Voice Meter Banana software is you're gonna wanna go into your sound panel. So just search your Windows button, sound panel, and go to your control panel. Um, that will bring up your standard control panel. Now, don't worry about what I have selected here because it's actually gonna be different than what I recommend you to do. Uh, if you're just looking to get this set up and started without using any sort of virtual surround, which I utilize Razor Surround for that, uh, you're going to want to go ahead and you're going to want to select the voice meter input, uh, VAIO, make sure it's not aux, VAIO, and set that as your default. Uh, then you're going to want to go over to the recording tab and you're going to scroll down and find the VB Audio Voice Meter VAIO. Again, not AUX, but the standard VAIO. You're gonna put that as your default recording device. Once you're done with that, you can click OK. Okay, so now we're gonna talk a little bit more about the Voice Meter interface itself. So you can see there's a lot going on, and believe it or not, there's another version of this that has more inputs and outputs available. Uh, but for the purposes of this tutorial, we're just gonna go ahead and stick with what we have here. So when you first fire this up, it'll look a little bit different than what you see on my screen, and that's okay. Uh, we're gonna focus right now on this first hardware input module. So. Uh, you'll see that I have titled this uh, from hardware input one to main mic by and that's because this is my main microphone when I'm playing games or talking to you uh, the blue Yeti blackout edition um, when you select this you have a lot of different options so any microphone or input device you have connected to your computer should show up in this list. Now you'll also notice there's MME and KS audio options as well. I found that uh, for less latency, and that means the time it takes for you to hear my voice compared to when you see my lips moving, uh, the WDM, or which I believe means Window Device Manager, uh, that one has always worked the best for me. But if you're having issues, feel free to try one of the others. So I select my Yeti stereo microphone because that's what I want you to hear as my main input, input device. So going on down, you'll see this IntelliPan uh, panel right here. And right now it says FX Echo. So I actually have the FX version set a little bit lower um, than the standard. This is what it sounds like standard. If we go all the way to high, this is what it sounds like. It's really weird when you get all the way up here. Um, if you double click, it goes back to whatever normal should be. But I like to have my uh, voice sound just a bit lower because I feel like it gives me more of that radio announcer voice. Um, going on down, you'll see that there is uh, comp and gate. So I'll start with comp. Uh, essentially what this does is this just increases the level of your voice and it goes up to 10 so you can you can hear you can hear the gasps when I breathe in and it sounds super weird um, but I always keep that at uh, zero because if I want to make my voice louder all I have to do is send this slider up a little bit more you can't hear it as uh, as well there but Again, I keep that at zero most of the time unless people are saying I'm too loud, I'll bring it down a bit, or if I'm too quiet, I'll bring it up a bit. But a lot of that can be done in game settings as well. Uh, the main reason why I got Voice Meter Banana in the first place is because in my old apartment, I had a lot of background noise. So I had a fan, I had an air conditioner, I have dogs who you may hear snoring throughout this video. Plus I had a blue keyboard, which as many of you know, is very clicky. If any of you have played Fortnite or any other game where people can have open voice comms, you feel what I was trying to avoid. And that is having people hear what's going on when you're trying to play because 
Sound is huge in games. Being able to hear footsteps and directions uh, literally can mean the difference between life and death. So that's why I went this route. Uh, the gate, so what gate means is essentially uh, the amount of noise required for the microphone to pick up the sound. Now, the Blue Yeti actually has its own gate features, but I utilized the software back when I had the Snowball version of Blue Yeti. That did not have any additional features, and any cheap mic that you have, even a $10 one, this feature can utilize, and it is fantastic. I'm going to... Uh, be quiet for a second so you can hear what my background sounds like. I'm going to pound on my desk. I'm going to rock back and forth, which you can probably hear in the microphone right now. And I'm going to type on my keyboard. And I want you to hear what it sounds like with gate set to seven. So you shouldn't have heard anything at that point. Uh, and that's because I found for my environment, seven works really well. Now you want to be really careful with how high you set the gate, because a lot of the times if you set it too high, you can get cut off mid sentence just because you might be speaking in a different tone. So I'm going to go through a couple examples of that. So right now you can hear me, but if I start back, you lose it because I'm not talking very loudly. I'm going to go ahead and set this to zero now, and I'm going to do those same tests, but I want you to hear the difference. You can hear a lot more static from the background from open, but when I start typing and hitting my desk and rocking back and forth, listen to those sounds as well. So you can hear there is definitely a difference in there. Um, and I know that seven works great for me, but you may find six or lower works fine for you. Um, going back on down for the rest of this interface, you'll see a couple buttons, a slider, and then your voice levels. So the voice levels is very self-explanatory. This is essentially showing you that you have voice going through your input. Um, A1. So A1, if you go up to the top right of the interface, you'll see it is right here. And this is your hardware out section. So uh, when you're first setting up voice meter banana, the two things you wanna make sure you set up so you can hear what's going on is your main mic by selecting your main mic, whatever it may be for you, and then your main hardware out. So these are your speakers, your monitor speakers, your headset, whatever it may be. Anything that can receive sound should be in this area. Again, WDM has always been the best for me. So right now, my first A1 audio input device are my speakers, which are my headset. Um, I have it connected to my motherboard, and it just shows up as speakers. The thing I have selected in my A2 device, so another sound output device, is my monitor. So my monitor has built-in speakers. So um, right now, I'm only sending the sound to, from my microphone to my headset. So I can actually hear everything I'm saying. And some people like that, some people don't, but I like to be able to monitor what my voice sounds like. I'm also sending this uh, sound, whatever's coming from my microphone to my virtual output one and my virtual output two. Now really, you don't have to worry about two virtual outputs and I'll go ahead and desele deselect all of these because that's only if you have something else like a stream going that you wanna go off. And I'm happy to make another video to talk about my stream setup and now I have my audio station between the two of those. But for right now, so long as you're sending to B1, which is over here on the bottom right hand side, that's what anybody's going to hear, whether it be your stream, whether it be you doing a recording like this. Anything that is being sent to the recording software, the stream software goes through here. And I can turn that sound. I can turn it down. It really depends on, I can mute well so that you don't hear anything. I change the EQ, make it mono and a bunch of stuff. But I keep all that stuff standard. Now, uh, we have a couple other uh, inputs that you see. So I actually have my webcam microphone connected for my second audio. 
audio input device and I have my microphone on my headset connected as my third input device. So though, even though you see voice levels happening right now, uh, you, you don't see, you see how it's grayed out. That's because I have it muted. So you're only hearing what I want you to hear right now. And so is our B1 main virtual output. Now say I wanted you to hear my voice coming from the webcam. I'm, I will go ahead and mute the blue Yeti and then unmute the webcam. So now you should hear really terrible audio because I know I'm hearing it. And this is also being pushed out to B1. Now let's say I had a stream hooked up and maybe this was a music device. You could push this out to B2. And as you can see, whatever would be connected to this output is also hearing that. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and switch off of this and then go to the third mic, which is the headset mic. So it should sound a little bit better. All right, so this is my third audio input device, and this is the microphone connected directly to my headset. Again, you should be hearing this, as would your stream or anyone else in your party. Um, voice meter is really great because if you're trying to do an interview or anything like that, then you can put all of these inputs in there and you can have different folks. You could also, you'll notice I have my second input labeled FN audio. So that is actually my Fortnite audio. So in Fortnite with group chat, uh, you can actually send that to a different output device. So rather than uh, my stream hearing my Fortnite audio, I could have it sending to B1, which would be my input or my headset so I can still hear them, but have it deselected from sending to B2, which would be my stream input. So uh, that's one way that you see a lot of streamers get around having to mute in-game audio um, through this type of software if they're utilizing it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and switch back to my main mic so we can finish this video up. All right. So uh, going back into some of the features of IntelliPan, just because I don't know if I went through those, is you can actually change the modulation of your voice uh, and it can do things and make it sound really weird. Uh, but again, I keep that normal. And then you can also do positional. So if you only want to hear you know, me in the right cup of your headset, you put it to the right, left cup to the left, stereo in the front, a bunch of different options. Um, over here, you've got your desktop main audio. So uh, right now, anything that is coming to my desktop, including game sound, or say I had a YouTube video up, uh, that, could, that would all go to my main desktop. And that is also being sent out to my virtual audio input. So say I didn't want any game sound to be sent out to my stream, all I would have to do is select this B1 option and you'll see that this continues to go up because it's picking up my microphone, but it if I had a YouTube video playing in there, it would go silent if I were to go silent. So I'll turn that back on. Uh, plus I can hear all this through my main headset right now. Um, the other really cool thing about Voice Meter Banana is um, it has the option to separate different audio channels. So. Uh, in standard windows, if you were to open up uh, volume mixer and go to your sound mixer options, brings up this screen. Okay, brings up this screen. So you'll see it's got a, every app or whatever that you would have open and it has the default output it goes to. Uh, this uh, video is a Google Chrome video and you can see I have it selected to the aux VAIO output. Uh, so what that does is it actually sends the video uh, output to this channel, the aux channel. And then I could do two things. I could have A selected and I could hear it through my headset. So I'll play it right now. So I can hear this video right now through my headset, but you should not be able to hear it because I'm not sending it to B1, which is my main output. However, if I were to select B1, you should start being able to hear this video. Sorted by price 
and or so you should be able to hear both right now at that time now let's say and i didn't want to hear this, this video it. because it's so a music it's time to figure out background whether playing what we i could deselect a so i no longer or hear the we video made a horrible mistake. and you should still be able to hear speaking it. of horrible and mistakes I would be able not to checking out our sponsor for today's device, video so and live their and new mod mic wireless features a low latency high quality connection so i'm going to status indicators up to 12 hours of battery life and more check it out at the link in the video description blue yeti's not picking it up so you should be able to hear the audio coming through the microphone but not through the actual recording device all right um so really that's it um i like to watch streams and i like to watch youtube videos in the background but i don't like to listen to it as i'm playing because like i said sound is super important specifically in games that i play because directional hearing is extremely extremely important to doing well in the game all right everyone so that's it for this video uh, i hope that this recap has given you a little bit more insight into how this program works and those of you who have been having issues can solve those uh, also, those of you who have a lot of background noise, please download this program and set your gain very high so I don't have to hear your keyboard clicks or your little brother crying. Uh, but with that being said, please, please, please donate to this company uh, if you are utilizing their software. It's been incredible and I use it every day. It's definitely well worth a few bucks that you can kick their way because this thing is truly a game changer. Uh, if you like this video, please click the like button and get subscribed. If you want me to go more in depth on how my stream setup works, feel free to let me know in the comments. Uh, but beyond that, uh, we will talk to you later. Thanks, guys.